Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and expert on Warner Brothers Discovery. I've done more than 70 videos over the last three months covering everything going on with Warner Brothers Discovery, a lot of the business, a lot of the entertainment side, a lot of the interesting development. So check that out if you want to see more. Zaslav wants franchises. That's what Zaslav made clear. He's the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery at the last third quarter 2022 conference call. He covered it extensively and we're going to cover it extensively. It's important to know what they're targeting to do. Now, Deadline has an article about this, Warner Brothers Discovery Chief David Zaslav on Conglom's content strategy, real focus on franchises like Superman and Harry Potter. And what people don't understand is when he says, hey, listen, I want us to do franchises, what he's talking about is he wants projects that are going to be iconic, that are going to work in the United States, but will also work all over the world. And what happens with these projects is even though they're more expensive to produce, you can distribute them in more places and pretty much forever. Black Adam is a good example. Black Adam is going to be shown in movie theaters in the United States internationally, but it's also going to be on pay television. It's going to be on free television channels. It's going to be on their streaming service. They might even license it to other people's streaming services. It's going to be on cable channels throughout 230 countries. All of this over time. So the idea is you produce a franchise because that franchise is something that's going to be able to be sold multiple times over. So they really are able to cover their costs of production as long as it's a solid production. It's got good audience interest. It's not for the critics. Audience interest is what's going to make a franchise work. All right, let's get into the conference call. Before we do, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. Really appreciate the channel, it's been doing great. It's all thanks to you guys, sincerely. All right, let's listen to David Zaslav himself talk about what kind of films they're gonna be making and they're gonna be focusing all their efforts on at Warner Brothers Discovery. Thank you. Um, maybe first to kind of pick up on Doug's question on content and ask it a slightly different way. David, uh, you know, between the content write down and a lot of the changes to personnel you've made, I'm just wondering how you could characterize the content strategy now. Um, it seems like it was a little bit broken under Warner Media before. Uh, and when you think about what content is going to look like in the future, uh, I was just wondering if you could kind of say how it's going to be different under Warner Brothers Discovery uh, than, than what it is under, under Warner Media. Thank you. A couple of things. Um, one, we're going to have a real focus on franchises. Um, we haven't had a Superman movie in 13 years. We haven't done a Harry Potter movie in 15 years. What are the, the, the DC movies and the Harry Potter movie, movies provided a lot of the profits of Warner Brothers motion pictures over the last 25 years. So focus on the franchise, what are the big advantages that we have? House of the Dragon is an example of that. Game of Thrones, taking advantage of sex in the city. Lord of the Rings, we still have the right to do Lord of the Rings movies. What are the movies that have brands that are understood and loved everywhere in the world? In the, outside the US, most in the aggregate, Europe, Latin America, Asia, it's about 40% of the theaters that we have here in the U.S. And there's local content. And so when you have a franchise movie, you will, can often make two to three times the amount of money you make in the U.S. because you get a slot and a focus on the big movies that are loved, that are tenpole, that people are going to leave home, uh, leave early from dinner to go to see. And we have a lot of them, Batman, Superman, Aquaman. If we can do something with JK on Harry Potter going forward, Lord of the Rings, what are we doing with Game of Thrones? Um, what are we doing with a lot of the big franchises that we have? We're focused on franchises. Two, we've learned what doesn't work. And this is what doesn't work for us based on everything that we've seen and we've looked at it hard. One is direct to streaming movies. So spending a billion dollars or collapsing a motion picture window into a streaming service, the movies that we launch in the theater do significantly better and launching a two hour or an hour and 40 minute movie direct to streaming has done almost nothing for HBO Max in terms of viewership, retention, or love of the service. You can understand now why DC Comics is so important to Warner Brothers Discovery. 
Their attitude is, hey, we've got these incredible brands. They're known all over the world. They're understood all over the world and they're loved all over the world. Sure, we can create new brands and new franchises and try experimental things if we want to, and that's fine, but let's do that when we run out of what we already have. So if we can do another Harry Potter movie, if we can do a DC universe of movies, and why can't they? There's no reason they shouldn't be able to do that. Do that first, sell those, sell those internationally. And most importantly, sell them through all of their special distribution channels. So once the movie comes out and it does whatever it does in the theaters, they can then go and put it on HBO. They can put it on their free cable channels. They can put it on their streaming service. They can put it on the new free advertising supported service they're starting next year in 2023. They can put it multiple places. That allows them to make sure the costs are covered, which is numero uno. That's always number one in business. You make sure you break even. And then the next is, okay, let's just keep selling this forever and make a huge profit. So it's not just about the theatrical. And it's also not about pleasing critics. You can please critics all day long, but it's the audience score that matters, especially with a franchise. So if they make a new Superman movie and the critics love it, but the audience hates it, what does that do to the Superman franchise? What does that do to the rest of DC? That's why they had to cancel Batgirl. If they thought there was a small chance even that putting out this terrible Batgirl movie was gonna damage the DC Comics brand, that would damage the entire franchise. It's not just a one-off. It's not okay anymore to just go ahead and produce like, oh, we'll just pop this movie out. No, it's gotta be something that they expect is going to be a hit. And by following franchises and by following proven processes of things that do produce good results, Warner Brothers Discovery will make good superhero movies. If they do another Harry Potter movie, it's gonna be a good Harry Potter movie. Good in terms of what the audiences want. That's their whole strategy. That's why it's an exciting company. This article from Collider came out. David Zaslov shows no remorse for canned movies and series during investors call. And he did say, quote, we did not get rid of any show that was helping us. Well, what do you mean no remorse? I don't even understand the concept. Is he supposed to start crying over bad TV shows or somebody else that wanted to see Infinity Train for another season? Like Infinity Train may have been a good cartoon. It just, it doesn't fit the strategy they have for production, marketing, distribution, or franchises. It doesn't mean they won't try original ideas. Of course they're gonna try original ideas, but it's all secondary to like, let's, let's act, we have Batman. Let's actually make sure we're making the most of Batman. And then we'll fool around with other screwy stuff if we can figure out how that stuff actually helps what we're trying to do. Now, when I see these guys say remorse, I'm like, did I forget? Because I could forget things sometimes. Did I forget what remorse actually even means? I'm like, I Googled it. I'm like, okay, remorse. Remorse. Deep regret or guilt for a wrong committed. What's wrong about canceling things that people aren't drawn to? As he said, like they did the work. They looked at what worked and what didn't work with respect to the streaming service. Like, can you produce a hundred or $200 million movie, put it on your streaming service and expect to get better retention of your subscribers? Are, they, are you gonna get people that demonstrate somehow they love the service more? Because if the answer is no, they're not gonna do it. It's very straightforward. It's very merit oriented. I think you can follow it. I mean, it's so to, to ask like, well, why isn't he showing remorse at an investor's call? That's not what investors wanna hear about. You hear the questions that they're asking about. What's your content strategy? Not to support the creative community. What's your content strategy so that we're gonna expect that your cash flow is gonna improve, you're gonna make money and be profitable. And he went on to explain the, the argument for franchises, which is a fantastic argument. It's a can't lose strategy. If they plan to at least break even theatrical, and then for the next 20, 30, 40 years, they're able to continue selling the same content. Do you know how many years and decades they're gonna be marketing Black Adam for? Black Adam is, was up to um, 319 million internationally as of this past weekend. Uh, it's it, it's drop off was lower than expected. It is holding very well. People like it. Audience's score is staying high. People are going to see it for uh, multiple times. That's a film they're gonna be able to sell forever. And what's even more with Black Adam was that was also a test of their promotional efforts where they get free advertising. You heard me correctly. Free advertising on their cable channel, on all their distribution outlets that they own. They're able to promote. They don't need to pay themselves for ads they run for Black Adam on CNN. All they have to do is use extra library of inventory of unsold advertising sales. Or if they want to prioritize, they can, they can use their best advertising sales to promote these internally produced franchise titles. 
you can say it costs, oh, $100, $200 million to market a movie. Like It's like, yeah, but if 40 or 60 or 70% of the marketing is their own dead zero cost inventory of advertising, it really didn't cost that much to promote. They're set up very well to do well and make money. They still have to deal with this $50 billion debt. It's no joke. They have already paid down $6 billion of it since the merger. Business is business. We'll see how it goes. But I have a lot of confidence in that common sense talk that the, this team does when they address like, well, what's your business strategy? What are you trying to do? They actually just directly tell you. All right, so let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. I always like to see your comments. You can agree with me, that's cool. Disagree with me, I, I see some great new ideas in there, I get into some good conversations with you guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel, click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it, it's a huge help. And I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.